Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about being the regret hire. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a bit of a story, but in essence, it was Frederick, I am a programmer that my company regrets hiring. How do I come back mentally from being so disliked or being called, being questioned as a programmer? And the short answer is you need to test your commitment to this profession and understand and ask yourself, why am I doing this? What, what, what's important to me as a, as a programmer? And finally, you need to consider that it might be this way today, but it might be a completely different world tomorrow. Let me explain. So this person was basically stating something I thought was pretty heavy that he in response he basically stated that in response to one of my old videos about what does a regretful hire look for like for a company he stated that he was unfortunately one of these people he said that it was 100% his fault because he fails at doing basic tasks and things of this nature his employer thinks he's absolutely like the worst and he has gotten the comment you call yourself a programmer a few times and he He's more or less wondering how do I, how do I get back from something like that? How can I, possibly you know how can I look myself in the mirror when pe when people are feeling this way about me? And you may not think it, but and I'm not going to say it was the same way for me. But I had a very similar sort of start when I started programming, and it was something that I, at the time, it was absolutely horrible. It was a very hard experience, and in a, now when I look back on it, I I'm kind of happy that it happened because I got you know as they say, pain and suffering and things of this nature is the best teacher. It suffering is the best teacher for sure. And what I'm going to tell you is what I learned from a very similar sort of experience because when I first started my first absolute job. I was not even out of school at the time. I had like, I think a few months left on my education and I started doing kind of part-time work. Now, the company that I started working for, they had absolutely no onboarding process. They had no, they had no idea of how to run an IT company with, in the sense that, well, they ran a successful IT company, but the whole company was based on, well, it, the foundation was based on a few very senior developers or more experienced developers, and they had no plans whatsoever for hiring juniors or things of this nature. So onboarding, like you could forget about it, mentors, you could forget about it. You basically got a desk and a project where with almost no like onboarding or introduction process, and then they were, you were kind of off to the races. Now, for someone like myself who had been working for, as I said, like this was like my first job ever. I've just basically learned what a server is and I know just enough to save some stuff to a database. This was completely overwhelming to me. It was a new language for me or a semi new language, new application, new environment, like all of this stuff. So I had the, the, I had this exact sensation because I started realizing that shit, the expectations on me here, they are sky high. They seem to believe that I'm going to just be here and I'm going to produce as much as some of the, one of their other employees who have been with, who has been working for years. Like they've been even before they went to school and like some of them went and did their master's degree and so forth at this company. I mean, they have been professionally programming before then as well. Like before they even got there, they had had five years of IT experience. I had none. And so I can relate to this because after just a few months, there, there they, it kind of became this reoccurring pattern where I felt that my employer was really unhappy with me. I felt all the time like I was too slow, too bad, and like I did all the mistakes. I made all the mistakes that I've been telling you about things such as overpromising on delivery because I feel bad, things like trying to just avoid people because I was scared that if I talk to somebody, they're gonna notice that, oh shit, I'm absolutely crap of this thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the only thing that kind of sustained me during that time it was that I was so gosh darn set on becoming a successful programmer. 
That was the only thing that ma- kept me going. That was the only thing that mattered. It's always been the only thing. Honest to God, it's been the only thing that's mattered to me since the second I realized that, you know what, this PHP thing was kind of cool. After that, and I went into like, edu- I started educating myself and like getting into university or like, and things of this nature. I, all of that stuff, the only thing that mattered, and ha- and this has been the case for many years, was that I was so hell-bent on this thing. And this is the thing that I want this subscriber to, to really think about, because you may suck at programming, and some people, like, you have diff, people are different. Some people need to, and it's the same thing with anything, like uh, some people get fit by just going to the gym twice a week for a few months and then they're super super ripped and some people like myself have to work for years and years and years to even not you know to just get to a point where you're not fat as fuck and it's an unfair world the same thing goes with programming some people are going to kind of just get it and some people are going to have to work for it and you might be one of those people that has to work for it and then you really have to ask yourself do I enjoy this so much that I'm willing to invest what is required? Because that's the key thing. Are you willing to put in the work? Regardless of how much work that is, regardless if, if you know, fuck all the other people, like forget about what people are doing in their different pa- on their paths in life. It doesn't matter where you are in relationship to other people. It's about your path. Do you feel that this road that you are walking is something that you can endure? Because they're gonna, there's going to be a few hard times along the path. And you're experiencing, and I'm sorry to say that it's happening so early, but this is where you are right now. And once you have passed that question, and you can really truly say that you have chosen to stick with this, I will tell you what happened for me. So after about a year of working in this environment and having severe stomach pains and, and anxieties and all these sorts of things, right? I started feeling like, you know what? I've been working here for a while now and I feel that I have acquired enough experience because I was unsure if I would get another job or things of this nature because I didn't have enough experience, right? But at one point I was contacted by a recruiter for a very big IT company. And I thought this was an exciting opportunity because I thought the company that I'm working for there, it's a very small, it's a fairly small company and this is a very large international company. And I thought this is probably a very good fit for me because I had talked to a lot of the developers who were already working there, who from my eyes were kind of carrying the whole company. And the one thing they all had in common was that they all had at least five years of experience working at a fairly, like a mid-sized to large corporation. Now that was something that struck me as interesting because I thought to myself, maybe the, the problem here is that they're here and they're surviving and thriving in this environment with all this freedom that they're getting because they already have the skills that are necessary. They've gone through some basic training so that they can actually perform already. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe the problem isn't that I might be the worst programmer in the world. It might be that I'm simply in a situation or I find myself in a context where the requirements are higher on me than where I am today. Like I'm simply not able to perform in this environment. So I took that job and I am so happy that that I did. It was the best move of my entire career. I got to go to a company where they had an onboarding process. They understood that I was a junior developer. I had senior experienced coworkers. I wasn't just working as a solo island, which was the case in the first company. I actually got to be in a team. I got to get to learn the ropes. I got mentorship. I got all these things. And within a fraction of the time that it took me to learn even basic things as the first company, I felt that I went from pretty much being this junior nobody type of developer who didn't know anything to being someone who actually kind of knew the ropes and kind of knew how to do things. I remember this even to this day. I was immensely flattered by one of my my, my manager. He said to me, Frederick, I, because I said to him, I'm sorry if, you know, my performance isn't up to up to scratch, but, you know, I'm still, I still consider myself to be a fairly junior developer. And he just, he looked at me and he said, Frederick, I don't know if you're aware of this, but most of your coworkers consider you to be at least a, mid-le- a decent mid-level programmer. That was the biggest compliment at that point in time that I had ever gotten from another human being within IT. 
me, me, Frederick Christensen, this little nobody guy who just came out of school, I, I had like a year of experience, was considered by seasoned veteran programmers to be a mid-level mid developer. To me, that was like completely mind-blowing. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you are in that emotional state that you're being kind of hammered and you feel like you're absolute shit at what you do and so forth, first and foremost, ask yourself, are you willing to endure this? Are you willing to do what's necessary in order to become a programmer, to become a successful programmer? Because trust me when I say this, you can. It's not beyond you. It's a matter of investment and dedication. That's what it comes down to. You may not be the best programmer who's ever lived, but you're going to be able to become a professional. I promise you that you can. And once you've decided that for yourself, if you're going to pick a different path or if you're going to stick with this thing, then ask yourself, maybe the context is the problem here. It was for me, because in one company, I was looked upon as the worst programmer who's ever lived. In another company, I was looked, as, uh, looked at like this kind of whisk kid type of person who seems to just kind of get some stuff. And then, you I mean, I made mistakes in that company as well, but most of them would consider considered me to be fairly de be a decent programmer. So that might be the problem. Like it might be that you're simply in a situation or in a context where you just don't fit in. And then maybe the solution is moving toward to some somewhere else. That's at least how I solve my problem. And hopefully you will take this to heart and remember this one thing, dude, you're doing this for yourself. What other people say about you is actually not that important because as long as you're, you're focused on learning and progressing your skills at the cost of everything else, these are, if you're willing to make these sacrifices, you will make it to the other side. Have a great day.